Hello, everybody. This is Hollywood Matt Connolly. Do you want to start that again? You yeah. did. You'll say it wrong. <laughs> it sounded like you said that this is Hollywood. Hob- Hollywood. 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 <laughs> do, do you want the rights to the Hollywood name? I, oh, well, I will soon once I know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start again. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Bob, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to do it by accident. <laughs> this is the whole episode. It's like being, being ridiculous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is Hollywood, Matt Connolly. I am here with combat sports ring announcer Dave Stockbridge, the man himself. The man with the biggest arms in the world sitting across from me. I can barely see him because the, the arms are too big. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeves are barely hanging on. <laughs> if, he, if, he, if he flexes, the shirt is gone. Uh, so <laughs> we've got to have a quick look at some of the matches that are coming up. One of the ones that is very exciting mm. which is coming up this Sunday for us in Indeed. Australia. It's yeah. Saturday night in the US. But it is uh, Dan Hooker from New Zealand. It's is in the UFC. He is fighting Islam. Uh, it's going to be an incredible match. Here is the way in here. You can see it on the screen. So uh, Islam is actually a, a massive favourite in this match for good reason. He has won. He's on a huge winning streak and completely, completely dominating his opponents. He's mm. he's like a, a, a massive version of Khabib Nurmagomedov. So. Mm. He takes people down. He crushes them, like mm. and and unstoppably. He's never looked in danger. He's destroyed everybody. Uh, Dan Hooker got the opportunity because Islam's original opponent got injured. Mm-hmm. Dan Hooker was in the US. He just won a fight, and they said mm, instead of going back to New Zealand and quarantining for two weeks, and then coming back and quarantining <laughs> for another two weeks, uh, do you want to just stay in the US and fight Islam? He's like, yep, I, wow. I would love to do that. He is. An absolute gamer. He's got massive respect for doing it because I think he's actually not going to see his family for like an entire year. Incredible. Because, yeah, huge sacrifice. Oh, yeah. 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 And and his style, oh, I mean, I can see why he's the underdog in this. Uh, he uh, Traditionally, you know, the, the Europeans and the Americans very strong on their, on their wrestling. Mm. Uh, the Australians and New Zealand, uh, we, we don't have wrestling at high school. You know, it's yeah. not... Um, one of our fundamental sports. It's, it's a not a skill set thing. picked up early as it might be with other stri- with striking sports, for instance. Exactly, that's right. So we tend to be, tend to be a little bit behind the eight ball going into grappling, but there are some very good grapplers in you know Australia and New Zealand. Mm. But uh, traditionally, it is mostly Europe. You know, you, you guys from Eastern Russia uh, and the US that have that dominating grappling style, the Greco-Roman. And that freestyle wrestling uh, background, and that's what Islam is really using to his advantage. He's taking people down, and they're not—they don't have a chance. Like he's he, like mauling them on the he's ground, yeah. on top of you. It's a gorilla on top of you. You yeah. can't get up, and he's just gonna keep you there forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you calling this one? Oh, I really want Hooker to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're conflicted in terms of yeah. so the betting, the betting. You've got a little bit of money on on Hooker just in case, I just think, in case. Yeah, I'm and going then, to because I think it's six to one. Okay, well I'm, it's worth putting a little bit down on yeah. that. That's uh, how much yeah. have you got on your wallet? Is that, <laughs> <laughs> that's all PayPal now. I've got, yeah. I never ever I don't have a wallet. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, it's six to one for a good reason. Uh, Islam's never looked in trouble. He's dominated everybody, but. This is his first big name opponent. Yeah. So going up against Dan Hooker, it's a great matchup for him. Yeah. Hooker's not a grappler. He's he's okay. He's he can defend himself. He can you know he obviously knows how to wrestle to a certain extent to protect himself. Yeah. He's not taking people down and submitting them or crushing them like Islam's going to. So he's going to keep this fight on the on the feet as much as he can. Hooker's really durable. He's probably one of the toughest guys I've ever seen in the cage. He's been absolutely destroyed by opponents before. We've got Roman. He's sneaking in behind you. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, mate. Hi. We're, we're recording, but you can pop in. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna move the screen because this is not at all gr- at all gratifying for. Uh, oh, it's for great. Great shot of. Uh, 
<laughs> Dana White's chin. Dana, Dana, Dana White would not be happy with that. Here we go. That's the, that's more like Dana, that's the yeah, Dana that's White the we want to see. see. There we go. Does use the women's Gillette to uh, shave his head, uh, I hear. He has right, for extra lubrication. W- women's one, yeah. yeah. Specifically. I don't, I don't yeah. know what the reasoning is. I think they're exactly the same razor, but just a different colour. But he's not aware of that fact. <laughs> Still on the job. <laughs> Still on the job. <laughs> hey, it's working. Oh, yeah, look at that. that that's a perfect... Uh, that's shine right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, Dan Hooker, uh, he got absolutely crushed by um, who's the spinning back kick guy, <laughs> uh, Barboza. Right, Edson yeah. Barboza is an amazing striker, and he went down on Hooker. Hooker stayed in the match, and he kept it competitive, even though he was getting blasted mm-hmm. with some of the biggest shots I've ever seen somebody take, and it was like. I think in the third round, they went th- three or five rounds, but he made it to the last round. It was probably the last minute of the last round, and he was he, w- he was barely able to keep his hands up. Mm. But you could see he still it was still he fighting, was still trying. It was in the fight. He was throwing like you know arm punches like this, <laughs> and Barbosa is just lighting him up like a kickboxing bag. Yeah. Uh, but he was still there, still trying. It, it's a classic case of creating your own opportunities, isn't it, in the sport? You know, he was there, he persisted. When he was there, he put in a great performance. And, and you know, in the UFC, win, lose, or draw, you put in a great performance, you're always going to be rewarded with another go. So yeah. uh, all credit to him. He's uh, done all the hard yards and uh, deserves the opportunity. Yeah, he had an amazing match. Dan Hooker and Dustin Poirier uh, recently mm. had a, 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 one of the best matches you'll ever see. It was weird because there was no crowd, there was no audience because COVID had restricted their audience numbers. So they only basically had the cornermen and the judges and the officials. Um, and it was just like you could hear, because there's no crowd, you could hear every punch, every movement, mm. their breathing. And it was so such a different atmosphere. But mm. because it was such an amazing back and forth match and they both teed off on each other uh, and both got rocked, both got hurt, both were in positions to win the fight. Uh, it went to a decision. Uh, then Hooker ended up losing the decision, but it was so incredible. But yeah, that difference of not having that um, you know, atmosphere of the audience there taking away the sound of the punches landing, and it was just like, oh, you could hear like, <laughs> Higgs exchange, like, oh, Jesus, because yeah. no. you could feel the impact through the sound. It was, it was, it was awesome. That's maybe something they should really look at, trying to boost uh, the levels. Oh, maybe they're trying to keep the atmosphere, you know. T- to know that there's a crowd there to keep that excitement level, but yeah, it's definitely something that added to the experience is hearing those those moments from the fighters, and it was like the impact of their punches was just it just made it so much more. It was like oh man, that would have hurt so bad. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah, but in in isolation without all the background noise, it's it's uh, it's amazing to feel the velocity of some of those shots. Yeah, uh, you become a little bit desensitized that when you don't have the noise in the uh, mm. to back that the, the the power of those strikes up, mm. but. Uh, I, I will say though, I, I much prefer watching it with the crowd. Like, yeah. And I think the fighters seem to get a, a second wind out of it as well. Like it's uh, the, the adrenaline seems to pump that little bit harder. Yeah. And uh, and I guess if you're a fighter, like you know, you're really there to show the world what you mm. got. And uh, what what better way to do that than in front of a live crowd? Yeah, for sure. That's right. I mean, they've got the Ultimate Fighter TV show, which they have in their their gym in Las Vegas, and they'll have the matches there. Yeah, and never feels the same in terms of atmosphere. It does feel like a sparring match. So, yeah, the, the crowd does make a, a huge impact. But in terms of that sound, and, and I remember specifically I went to the, the first UFC that came to Australia in Sydney, uh, and the main event was Cain Velasquez and um, Rogerio uh, Nogueira. Mm-hmm. A, a big nog, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Velasquez landed this three-punch a combination and, and knocked out Nagera. Yeah. And those punches, I was like m- terrible seats, like mm-hmm. way up the back. But you felt them. Oh, you could feel them through the floor. I heard that's so loud. <laughs> it was like three firecrackers going off. It was like mm. bang, bang, bang. And, and he dropped. And watching it back on the replay later, like I, I went back and watched it that night, the, the sound difference from being in person and hearing it. Mm. And then watching it on the broadcast, it was so much, it was diminished by so much. It was like, it was just like, you don't realize how loud those punches landed. Like, that was, no one in the world would have taken that. That's right. Superman himself would have been on the floor. (laughs) It was so loud and so impactful. And and there was no way in the world that Nagara was going to stand that. And he didn't, he dropped that. But yeah, but watching it back was different. It was like, yes, you see it from different angles. Yes, you're seeing it in slow motion in high definition, but it was. 
that sound was missing. Yeah. So absolutely. So to to finish off, your your smart money. Smart money is going to be on Islam. Yeah. Okay. But if you want to make money, then you got to bet on uh, hooker. Okay. So there's uh, <laughs> Hollywood Matt Connolly's tip of the week for USC two six seven. Notice I didn't actually pick anyone. <laughs> <laughs>